Mr. Teru, in this lesson we are going to be introducing and going through lots of examples of finding derivatives of functions involving the natural exponential function. Uh, we're going to be talking about the definition, we'll be looking at properties of the natural exponential function, I'll do an example of solving an equation for x that requires logarithms to do so, that's just a review of hopefully what you learned in Algebra 2 or Precalculus, and uh, we'll be doing a sketch of a natural exponential function, just a sketch, because I want to I want to come about it by using and reviewing our knowledge about transformations of functions. And then we'll move into five examples of finding derivatives, uh, three of which will just go in increasing difficulty, and well, hopefully they all do. Uh, and then we'll do an example involving the second fundamental theorem of calculus, and then the final one will require some implicit differentiation to review some skills that we've learned this year. The natural exponential function, well. The inverse of the natural logarithmic function, uh, f of x is equal to the natural log of x, or log base e of x, is called the natural exponential function. So if f of x is equal to natural log of x, the inverse of f of x is equal to e to the x. They're inverse functions. So let's, how, do, how else can we say that? Well, y is equal to e to the x if and only if x is equal to the natural log of y, basically just, you know, taking this equation and, and, re and going through the steps of solving it for x instead of y. Another way of looking at it would be to check whether they're actually inverse functions by using the definition of the inverse function. You know, can you do compositions of these two functions, f of g of x and g of f of x, do both of those come out to be equal to x? Well, if so, then f and g are inverses. So we have the natural log of e to the x is equal to x. Well, I just wrote that, and, and it's true, but if you want to see why it's equal to uh, just simply x, you can, it, you can take this equation that is in logarithmic form and convert it into exponential form. Now remember, when you take the log of a number, you're just getting an exponent. So I always say in class, like the log base 10 of 100 is equal to 2, because 10 squared is equal to 100. So what you get from a log function is an exponent. So if I want to write this in exponential form, the base of the log, or natural log, is e. What we get from the log function is an exponent, so it's e to the x. And I have an e to the x here, but that's right here. So log base e of e to the x is equal to x. So this x is my exponent, and then what I'm taking the log of is, is sort of like the answer in exponential form, and we see that e to the x is equal to e to the x. And e to the natural log of x equals x. Well, when you have a base on your exponential form, and if that equals the base of the logarithm, and they're, and they're exactly stacked like this, like maybe if there was a 2 in front of this natural log, I'd have to move it up to be an exponent on the x, but the base e and the log base e are stacked with no leading coefficient or any other craziness going on. So they just cancel out. And it equals x, or you can write it in this, this equation that's in e, uh, exponential form into log form. And we get log base, the base of the exponent is e, and <clears throat> the answer that's in this exponential form is x, so it's going to be log base e of x. And then again, what you get from a log function is an exponent. So the exponent that's on the e is the natural log of x, and we have log base e, which hopefully remember is the natural log of x is equal to the natural log of x. So both of these compositions reduce to or simplify to x, thus one more time they're inverses. Or, if that's not enough, you can look at it graphically, which will help to uh, me, help me to go over these properties of natural logarithmic, uh, or excuse me, exponential function here. But we have an exponential uh, function, the basis greater than 1, so it's exponential growth, and the base is e, approximately 2.718. It goes through the point of 0, 1, and, unless there's some kind of transformation that's made, and, and goes off to uh, infinity. As x goes to infinity, the function goes to infinity. If you reflect that over the line y equals x, remember inverse functions, we just talked about this, of course, uh, our reflection over the line y equals x, you get a graph that is the function y equals natural log of x. So they both, they, they look graphically and would check out graphically to be inverse functions as well. So your properties of natural exponential functions are the domain of f of x is equal to e to the x is negative infinity to positive infinity. 
Uh, the range is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the range, of course, of the y values goes from 0 to infinity until you, st again, start messing around with transformations. This is like the parent function, properties of the parent function. The function f of x is equal to e to x is continuous, increasing, and 1 to 1 on its entire domain. Or as we were talking about in a previous section, it would be monotonic increasing, which means that basically the first derivative would always be positive okay, through its entire domain and it's concave up on its entire domain. So concave up means the second derivative would also be positive. And the end behavior, as we would have called it in Algebra 2 or pre-calculus, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x as you go to the left forever, it is approaching the y value of 0. So there's an asymptotic behavior as x goes to negative infinity, at least again, of course, for the natural exponential function. And then as x approaches positive infinity, uh, the function increases without bound and goes to positive infinity. Uh, let's get to a couple of examples, knock some dust off of some old algebraic uh, two skills or pre-calculus skills, and then we'll get on to those five derivative examples. Woo! Exciting! In my first example, we're going to solve this for x. Now, it is a review of some old skills of solving natural log functions or solving equations requiring logarithmic functions, so I'm going to disappear and let you solve this uh, and reveal the answer step by step. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 20 minus e to the x over 2 power to get that x out of the denominator. And then eventually logarithms will have to be used to get the variable out of the exponent. Let's see what the solution looks like. is equal to 2 times natural log of 12. Now, at this point, by the way, uh, I could have taken, uh, applied the log function to both sides of the equation. I could have used any base log. Uh, I could have done natural or the common log, log base 10, log base 2, log base 5, if for some reason I wanted to. But I'm, I'm applying the natural log to both sides, of course, because natural log is log base e and this exponent has a base of e, and we know now that that's going to very nicely cancel out and just save me a step in my work before I get my answer that isn't here in exact form. And of course, if you want to check it, um, you know, plug it back into your original function and actually make sure that it makes the left side equal to, of course, 50. Uh, let's get on to sketching based on uh, our knowledge of transformations of functions. For our sketch, uh, the function we're going to sketch is y equals uh, negative e to the negative x plus 2 plus 2. Try to include all the transformations I could in this one equation just to kind of get, you know, the one to take care of everything or as much as I can. Now before talking about transformations, I like to, uh, because there's two terms up here in the uh, exponent, uh, I like to take this negative coefficient away from the x in this uh, in this exponent and write it like this. Okay, so I'm going to look at this, the function written this way to identify what transformations has, bun, has been done here that we need to worry about as we make our graph. Okay, well the first thing is when you have when you have a negative leading coefficient that's going to re reflect the graph over the x-axis. So this is going to be a reflection over the x-axis, and just so you don't have to watch me write. All right, it's a little faster, right? So negative leading coefficient, reflection over the x-axis. If there was a value here that was, uh, let's say, like 2, uh, it would be a vertical stretch of 2. If there was a value that was between negative 1 and 1, or I guess if you want to discount the negative separately, uh, a coefficient that was between 0 and 1, that would be a vertical compression. Here, in front of the x that was in our exponent, which I have factored out and wrote negative parentheses x minus 2 parentheses. I like to do that because it's easier to determine does the graph move to the left or to the right. At least it works better for me in my teaching. So this negative uh, coefficient of x in the exponent, now that's going to be reflection about or over the y-axis. Now, with this negative um, factored out, 
and the coefficient of x being positive, I find it easier to teach and understand what direction the graph moves. So I have a minus 2 that's in my exponent. So when I put a value in for x, the very first thing before I ever let it enter the actual, uh, become an exponent, if you will, of e to the something, it's going to get subtracted 2. So this minus 2 with our positive leading coefficient or the negative factored out in front of the parentheses shows that our graph is going to move to the right two places. So this is a, if this were x plus 2 with the negative, of course, factored out. Now there's a plus 2 here, but with the negative right there on top of the, right there in front of the x, it, you might think that this graph shifts to the left, which depending on how you work the order of operations or whatnot and you deal with this reflection, uh, you might still get it right. I just think this is simpler. Reflection over the y-axis, now it's going to move to the right. And then finally, with our plus 2, you know, outside the main function that's in our function, the e to something with our variable up here in the exponent, this plus 2 is just a constant at the end of the equation, or it could be at the beginning too, it's just all about this constant alone, outside of or away from the main function in the equation, that is going to be a vertical shift, and it doesn't move in the opposite direction. So a plus 2 is a shift up. It's not going to be like a shift down that you might think with the left-right uh, horizontal movements that always seem to be in the reverse of what the sign would indicate. So this graph is going to go up 2. Now I'm going to step out, write that uh, statement, and then um, put an x-y axis in here and draw my final sketch by going through each one of these single transformations as we go until I'm done with the final um, representation or sketch of this function. As soon as I get the video to stop. Here we go. So we have the original parent function going through the point of 0, 1. And I ordered these as I applied them. If you, if you, you can apply them in slightly different orders. I like to do the reflections first and then the horizontal and then vertical movement, obviously, as I shown. So we have the reflection over the x-axis. So this graph reflects down and we get the green one. Then we apply the negative that we have, the negative leading coefficient we have in the exponent which is our reflection over the y-axis. So I take this green function and reflect it, um, still having it pass through that point of 0, negative 1, instead of what was originally 0, positive 1, because the reflection down over the x-axis. We took that function and slid it to the right two places. So I just try to take these points as best I could with the sketch and move them over all two units. And then finally applied that uh, last vertical shift of two units up. So what was a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, uh, that asymptotic behavior is the original parent function as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches 0, there's now a horizontal asymptote because of the vertical shift of y equals 2. So the, the range, if you will, of our final function is going from negative infinity, excuse me, up until 0. And most of the, it is a sketch. I try to make it, you know, obviously neat and clear and, and easy to to, uh, to read. I did I did really hone in on making sure this one key point uh, was plotted correctly. It was uh, going through the point of uh, zero one. Then with the reflections both through the uh, x and y axis, it's still going through that point of zero negative one. We moved it to the right two. Now it's going through two negative one, and then we shifted it up two units, and it's going through the point of two positive 1, where it was going through 2, negative 1. Okay, so we're going to give you the, the formula, not, not prove it, but give you the formula, if you will, um, or the, 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 the rules for finding the derivative of the natural exponential function, and go through those five examples involving derivatives. So here we have probably the hardest uh, rule for finding derivatives that we'll have in all of calculus. The derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. It, it's it's its own derivative. So that, that's going to be, uh, you can't get any easier than that. Uh, and there's a, there should be a proof of this in your textbook. We're just going to do five examples, and I'm just giving you the rule. And of course, obviously our problems are not going to be looking like this, because there's nothing to do. So with our u substitution we, and chain rule, we have the derivative with respect to x of e to the u uh, is equal to e to the u times du over dx, or the derivative of u with respect to x, or just u prime. 
And of course, u has to be a differentiable function of x. So over here, we, as, our, as our first example, we have y is equal to e to, uh, to the uh, square root of 2x power plus 1. Well, this equation does not exactly match this rule. That's, well, I mean, and as we have practice, we can kind of skip some of these steps. But as doing our first example, we're going to do that u substitution. So we have u, which looks like it's going to be our exponent, is going to be equal to the square root of 2x. Write that in exponential form. And then the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be, well, we'll bring this power down. Reduce it by 1. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And of course, we can have some, we have some cancellation that can go on here. Uh, this 2x, this 2 is, again, of course, underneath this power of negative 1 half. So this 2 and this, and this division of 2 cannot cancel, but those two do. And uh, we're just going to write my final answer, drop this down into the denominator to take care of my negative exponent. Let me go ahead and put the radical back around the square root of, or around the 2x. We'll have a lot of work over here. Let's get this written in terms of u. Finish our u substitution. So y is equal to e to the u plus 1. So u uh, y prime, or dy uh, over dx, derivative of y with respect to x, is going to be equal to e to the uh, u power times du dx. And that's a constant, so it's going to come out to be 0. And I'm just, you know, applying the rule as I have written here. And we're going to get the u substitution back out and re return our references to x. So we have y prime is e to the square root of 2x times 1 over the square root of 2x, which gives us, if you want to just write it as a single fraction, And maybe your teacher's perfectly fine with this. Maybe they want you to rationalize the denominator. You know, write your final answer as your teacher is requiring you to do so. That's the end of our first example. Bam! For a second example, we have y is equal to 3x squared times e to the negative x. We're going to find the derivative. Uh, now we're going to do y prime. And of course, use the product rule. So we have 3x squared. times the derivative with respect to x, the first uh, factor times the derivative of the second factor. And if you know the derivative, of course, just write it. I'm doing this in very small steps, so I'm going to actually just write this and do the u substitution in a second to finish it. So first factor times the derivative of the second plus the second factor times the derivative of the first. Okay. And since we're just starting this out, let's uh, do a little u substitution. We're going to let u equal negative x, and that means that du dx is going to be equal to negative 1. And we know that, well, let's finish u substitution. So we have y prime is equal to 3x squared times the derivative with respect to x of e u plus e to the negative x derivative with respect to x of 3x squared. So we have, <clears throat> well, let's see here, 3x squared and the derivative with respect to x with of e to the u power is going to be e to the u times du dx plus e to the negative x and this is going to be 6x. Getting the uh, references to you back out of here to get it all in terms of x again, of course, we have 3x squared e to the, uh, well, u is negative x, du dx is negative 1, and I can just write this as plus 6x e to the negative x. Well, then now we can see that. Um, this negative 1 can just be brought out front, and our final answer is going to be negative 1 times 3 
x squared e to the negative x plus 6x e to the negative x. And uh, this first term has an x squared, and this one has an x to the first. These are not like terms. Uh, we can write this like this. Uh, we can notice that, you know, just simplifying this as much as our teacher needs, we have a factor of 3 and a factor of 6. We can factor that out. Uh, we have a factor of x, and this has two x's, and the, both of these terms have a e to the negative x. So we could write this as... 3xe to the negative x times negative 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. We have two x's and we took one of them out, so just basically negative x or negative 1x. And 3 or 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. And we took the x and the e to the negative x out. And then finally, we can write this, uh, bringing this e to the denominator e to the x times uh, basically 2 minus x. These questions, you know, sometimes you, you get a derivative, of course, and you've done everything correctly, and you check it in the back of the book, and maybe it's in a format that you have, don't have it written in. So you can have the correct answer and have done the correct work uh, and not match what's in the back. Uh, you have a couple of choices. You can either keep manipulating your answer to match what's in the back of your textbook to check your work. You can maybe stop at a point that you think uh, is as far as you can go or, or just enough, and you can graph that function and then graph the answer in the back of the book and make sure that they match as well, just to check your work. Uh, so that's the end of our second example. As I was trying to, uh, you know, not make any mistakes with my individual steps, you really should be making sure that your notation is continuous all the way through your problem. Maybe you have to take the second derivative and then somewhere you forget where the you know, where your work was for the first derivative and second derivative or, or whatnot. So I uh, just wanted to add that y prime back in. Now for the second example, or excuse me, third example, well, I guess really got the first to the fifth example, uh, we're going to have to use the quotient rule for finding the derivative. Now, when I reveal this answer step by step, I'd like to give you the opportunity to try this on your own or just at least speed the video up and, and uh, just reveal the answer in small steps. I'm not going to show that u substitution and show that extra, uh, well, I'm not going to write it in the same way. So, and the reason why is because it's simply always going to be, what, e to the u times u prime, basically, or u, du over dx, derivative of u with respect to x, uh, you might just start shortcutting this. So, like, if we have a simple function of y equals 3 times e to the 4x, that y prime is going to be 3 times, and look, that u is 4x, e to the 4x, and then you multiply by the derivative of that u, which is going to be the exponent, uh, and you get 4. So this is going to be 12 e to the 4x. So that's how I'm going to kind of show my work as I reveal it for this particular question here. Pause the video, give it a shot. Practice your, practice your quotient rule. Well, here we have it. Our final answer is y prime is 6e to the 3x over e to the 3x plus 1 squared. Uh, just a couple of quick notes again, like the example I started here. We have 2 times e to the 3x, and the derivative with respect to x, that u is 3x, and u prime is 3. So 3, that u prime, times the 2 is where the 6 came from, uh, as well here, except our leading, our coefficient here is 1, so we just have 3 e to the 3x. Uh, distribute these items together, and of course, don't forget, when you multiply like bases, or like bases here uh, are e, you add the exponents, so 3 plus 3 is equal to these exponents of 6x, and we have our final answer. Our next example is going to involve the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So our next example, that uh, second fundamental theorem of calculus problem, f of x is equal to the definite integral of, uh, well, for the lower limit of 0 and the upper limit of natural log of 2x of the tangent of e to the t dt. Okay, so that means that f prime, we're looking for derivatives, of course, is the derivative with respect to x of this definite integral.
And we start to see, uh, with the lower limit being a constant and the upper limit being a variable, uh, that that, you know, we're starting to see the application of where the second fundamental theorem of calculus is coming in. And if that was simply an x, then the answer would be the tangent of e to the x. But it's not. It's natural log of 2x. So we're going to need to do a u substitution. And that also means incorporating the chain rule with the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And what that's going to look like is the f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to u, because we're going to do a u substitution of our original function f of x, and then we're going to have to multiply by d the derivative of u with respect to uh, x. And mine was saying u again, or u prime. Okay, so we need a u substitution, and that's going to be about this upper limit. So we're going to say let u equal the natural log of 2x, and so we need a u prime, or derivative of u with respect to x. and kind of doing the chain rule here, or a u substitution in our head, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, but it's not simply x, it's 2x. So we have 1 over 2x, and then multiplying by the derivative, I'm doing a u substitution in my head, or you can think of it as chain rule, the derivative of 2x is simply equal to 2. And that simplifies to be 1 over x. So derivative of u with respect to x is 1 over x. Well, let's come back in here and fill this up. We have <clears throat> the derivative f prime of x is the derivative with respect to u of this definite integral, starting from here. I'll do my u substitution in a second. Okay. Let's do the u substitution. Let's get that upper limit out of there and plug in u. Just getting all that notation in there. Okay, we have our upper limit now is just a basic u, like it was with an x, with the original form of the um, second fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're going to have uh, f prime of x is equal to the tangent of e to the u, again, du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x. And let's get that references of u out of here and get back into our terms or variables of x. And we have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of u with respect to x is 1 over x times the tangent of e to the natural log of 2x. Now you might want to just go, boom, I'm done. I mean, it says f prime, and I've got all my references of x back in here. But we have the tangent of e to the natural log of 2x. So you know, when I look for those cancellations, um, we have a base of e and we have a log base e. And we have a coefficient of 1. So basically that e and log base e are just stacked, or the natural log are just stacked right against each other. And that means that they can cancel. So this ends up being, the sign's a piece of chalk hitting the ground, uh, equal to 1 over x times the tangent. And with this base c and this log base e canceling, the tangent of 2x, or the tangent of 2x over x, if you want to write it uh, that way. All right. So I've got one more example involving implicit differentiation. We're going to use implicit differentiation to uh, find the derivative of e to the uh, xy power plus 3x to the fourth plus y squared is equal to 5. It would be much easier to do this implicitly than trying to uh, solve this for y somehow and then uh, take the derivative. So, we have e to the x times y. So using the, that chain rule, basically, and the u substitution in our head, if you will, we have the derivative of e to the xy power is going to be e to the xy times the derivative of that, that u, that exponent, which is going to be xy when we apply it. Plus, bring that power down, we have 12 times x to the third plus Bring this power down, and we have 2y, but again, we're doing this implicitly, and we're 
uh, taking the derivative with respect to x, that's why we just simply have a 12x cubed, this is going to be 2y, and then it's going to be times y prime. Just, I'm, I'm applying the chain rule, uh, but we're getting dy uh, over dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x, or I'm just writing that as y prime, and the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. All right. Well, over here, we have to apply the differentiation rule for the, or the product rule. So we have e to the xy times the first times the derivative of the second factor, so xy prime plus the second factor y times the derivative of the first, plus 12x cubed plus 2y times y prime, or dy over dx is equal to zero. So basically, I just need to get this solved for y prime or dy dx. So we're going to distribute. Actually, just to kind of speed this process up, I don't know if you need to see me do the algebraic manipulation. This isn't the first one we've done. Implicit differentiation. So let's speed this up a little bit, and I'll reveal the answer step by step. Or you can pause the video and try and solve for y prime on your own first. Well, let's see, uh, move the terms over the right-hand side that didn't have the y prime in them. Uh, these two terms both have a y prime, so I factored it out, divided both sides by this big old mess, and we have y prime, or the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to negative 12x cubed plus y e to the xy power over x times e to the xy plus 2y. I'm Mr. Tarou. Bam! Go to your homework!